Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. And also welcome back to my Summer of Sony, where we are going to be taking a look at this here TCK65. Once again, the same transport as what we saw last week and the K61 before that, which wasn't the week before that, it was a long time ago, but whatever. Same transport, so there will be very little of the actual transport service on video this time, I think. I will attempt to do what I was going to do with the K60 or with the K55 and uh, just show all the trouble spots and what I do to fix them. But uh, the K55 had a lot more trouble spots than I anticipated it did. So uh, who knows what we're gonna find in this one with its little uh, Quasimodo humpback thing it's got going on there. But. Uh, yeah, I'm determined to make this work, and uh, by the end of this, I will try to do a record and play test on this one, because I do want this one to record. It's the fanciest Sony two-head machine I've got, so, uh, yeah, I want to make the the whole thing work for me. But uh, before that, we got to get the transport serviced and figure out whether or not the electronics work and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, yeah, it should be interesting, so let's have a look around this... Uh, wondrous marvel of uh, tape deck technology before we get started. Obviously there's a lot of dirt on the uh, switches and front panel here so I'm gonna have to clean that. Door opens properly. Tape counter reset works. We've got this programmable... Pro blah, 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 blah. We've got this programmable music search thing going on here, which is nice. Hopefully that works. I don't know if I really want to uh, fix it if it doesn't work, but uh, I'm gonna try to make it work. Got the usual Dolby off, on, and filter off. The filter off would be for the MPX filter for taping stuff off FM, but uh, obviously there's no reason to do that around here where there are no FM stations. EQ type, we've got one, two, three, and four, so all four tape types. Bias controls for low, as in old, normal bias tapes, and medium for most normal bias tapes and type three, I think. Yes, and high bias for type two and metal for type four. Okay, we've got separate mic and line level recording controls down here. Will seem to be good, and wait a minute. We'll have to tighten that up for sure. Now, let's go around to the side here. We've got a sticker here. Sony Stereo Cassette Deck TCK65 Grade C. Condition notes, plays then stops, dented on. Yeah, that would be referring to the, uh, the top panel there. So, uh, I'll tell you right now, immediately, the top panel is getting switched out for my TCK61 parts deck. I would rather have this looking a lot better than this. And as for this, well, we're just going to have to cover that up with a, a wooden panel at some point. I don't know any other way to uh, address this. There should be some kind of a uh, metallic strip over this, but clearly that is not here. Either that or it used to have the wooden panel and it doesn't anymore, I don't know. Back panel, nothing of note here. This came from Florida, so I would be concerned about uh, corrosion on these uh, jack panels, but uh, there doesn't appear to be any excess corrosion. So, uh, and on this panel, there's nothing really to note here. How about the bottom panel? Anything under here? Uh, it's kind of dented under here as well. That is not good news. Yeah, you can see it's obviously dented in, so I want to get this panel off and take a look under there. But uh, for now, we'll put it back down this way, and I can get the bottom panel off the TCK61 as well. The K61 is never going to work again, because I destroyed that... Uh, weird magnetic clutch in there, but uh, whatever. 
Let's power it up and see what it does. Okay, we have plugged in status. Let's turn it on. Ah, interesting. We've got lights in this in the uh, VU meter here. I don't know if you can see them, but it did light up. So uh, those lights must work. So let's get this off so we can see better. And I want to see what happens with the transport here. Not a thing. We've got nothing doing in there. Does this work? Does not appear to. Capstan is not turning, so we've got no uh, capstan motor happening in there. Either that or the belt is broke, which is very likely. So let me set you up here and we'll get inside this real quick here because I want to see exactly what's going on in there. All right, let's see if we can figure out what's happening with this. I will turn my flashlight on here first so we can see. Nothing happening at the motor. It's, well, this belt that's in here is kind of wrapped around the pulley. Nope, it's not even trying to run. So, why no motor? Oh, and the cassette well light is working too. That's different. All right, so why no capstan motor? It's warm. It's locked in place. Oh, there we go. It was jammed. Good Lord, that's a loud motor. Oh, this thing needs help bad. Very likely I'll be replacing this motor with the one from the 61. This one is clearly in very uncertain condition here. Okay, and I just powered it up again and we've got no motor again. Oh, this motor is not healthy. But let me... Just leave it on for giggles and we'll see what happens when we hit play now. Okay, and the take up drive is working, kind of. It's easy to stop it. This deck needs so much lubrication, it's not even funny. Music search still doesn't work. Oh wait, there we go. Helps if you turn things on, doesn't it? I'm noticing the display in there, in here is a little dim too. So yeah, counter belt is apparently good. How about rewind and fast forward? Fast wind idler is working, apparently. Oh, that motor, not good. All of that sound is coming from this motor. 
A BSL motor should not sound like that. It's got bad bearings back here for sure. So yeah, I'm going to switch this with the one from the 61, I think. There's just no point to uh, keeping this as is. Shut it off again here. Oh, and it started on its own this time. Interesting. Now it's going to stay running for us, I guess. But uh, yeah, this transport's going to need serious help because uh, with the way that motor sounds, it's probably extremely high hours. So uh, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's clean the uh, tape path real quick. I want to just see how bad it is. The 55 was really bad. Actually, it's in better shape than the 55. Color me surprised. The capstan needs serious cleaning. That's no surprise either. It'll get a new pinch roller just like the 55 did. So yeah, got my work cut out for me on this one. I still don't know if it puts out audio. Shall we try that real quick? Let's try that, we can get it running. Our power tools are back online. Or at least our power tool sounding tape deck is back online. Let me clean this capstan just a bit more before I try to put a tape in this. This hasn't been cleaned in ages and I can tell. All right, well, put out audio. Let's find out. Just make sure this thing's gonna run first. Yeah, we need serious help with this. Intermittently, the uh, take-up reel is even coming to a full stop and uh, unspooling the tape in there, so... It will play, but it'll play a lot better once I service the whole transport. So I guess that's what I'm going to do now. No, what I'm going to do now is shut that off so I can hear myself think. So yes, full transport service is gonna happen on this one. Except for the fast wind idler, I'm gonna leave that be. I've decided it's probably best to leave well enough alone with this idler set up in here. And uh, just leave it the way it is, because if it's working now, it'll stay working for at least, who knows how long, but uh, it's the take up idler that really needs the help in this, as usual. I've only got one new idler tire for these, so uh, I'm not sure what that means for the TCK75. I'm going to have to wait for the new idler tires to come in for that one in order to even get started on that machine, so uh, I hope they get here soon. But uh, in terms of this one, I'm fairly confident I can bring this one around too. I've recently fought with the uh, 55, so I know the ins and outs of the transport fairly well by now. And yeah, like I said, I'll do everything off camera. I'll have that there, Bose Via, supply me with entertainment while I do so. And then we'll show you all the uh, problem areas in this transport and uh, what I gotta do to fix it. So how about I get started now? So before getting started, I decided to open up the bottom access panel and see what was going on in here. And uh, look at this, bent. Guys, this thing was dropped. I don't know when and where and how and why, but it's been dropped. And we've got a bunch of old crappy circuit glue up here that I'm gonna have to deal with. Delightful. Some up over here too, so. Yeah, lots of fun. I'm surprised it's working this well with this little bend in this bracket here, but uh, oh well, I bought what I bought. This was under budget, so it is what it is. 
And I've got a, by the way, I've got a fix your audio belt I'm going to use on the uh, main capstan belt on this one. Okay, the transport is out, and as usual, it was a pain. It's just like the 61, it's really difficult. You have to remove the entire front face carrier assembly off the unit in order to even get access to a pull this out, but it can be done. And I thought we'd take a look at this together while we're in here. And before I get started, you'll be pleased to know this little assembly is not cracked on this one. So she's already in better shape than the 55's transport. But uh, I will say it's getting stuck a lot easier too. So uh, definitely have to do something with the old grease in here. And uh, around this side, yeah, there's a bunch of old grease here too, so yeah, just the usual stuff from here, I guess, is all we need to do is just go through and clean up the old grease and put new grease and replace this motor, new belts, all that good stuff. So I'm going to get started on that now and I'll pick back up when I've got something to report. So before I get on with uh, fixing up the transport in this thing, I thought maybe it's probably a good idea if I actually try to do something with this old capstan motor rather than just simply replace it because for all I know I have to do this anyway on the TCK 75 and probably best to uh, sacrifice one that's possibly worth sacrificing so let me just try to get into this here if I can I believe the uh, front cover on this thing comes away independently and uh, yeah that's really tight in there. There's a definite dead spot in this motor so uh, let's see if we can take a look and see what's wrong with it. Okay there's our motor. And that should come right out, and yes, it does. Okay, we've basically got a reverse capstan thing going on in there. That's what I am seeing. There's our four coils for the motor. I just wonder how hard it would be to actually service this. Let me get a pipe cleaner, and we'll find out, shall we? And we cannot use acetone for this one because there's a... Uh, a plastic thrust bearing back there that I don't want to damage so uh, we're gonna use the uh, isopropyl alcohol at least on uh, the inside of the uh, bearing here yeah there's a bunch of old uh, nasty grease or whatnot down in there now the problem with this is if any strands come off your pipe cleaner like mine just did. You can't get them back out again very easily. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to deal with this, really. There might be a way to uh, pop this uh, bearing out. Don't know if I should even try that or not. But I suppose it's, if I'm going to sacrifice one of these, it should be this one. Just taking a look at the coil windings here briefly i don't see any issues with the uh, wires being broken here's the two hall effect sensors right here for for this motor yeah i wonder if i can pop that bushing out entirely i'd almost prefer to so question is what do i need for that kind of a thing let me think about this i don't know if i even want to do that Actually, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. Now, I will get out the acetone for the uh, shaft side of the, the equation here. I'm just going to clean it up like so. And let's see, what do I need? And are all 456 because we got to oil this.
Yeah, I think I've still got a fiber stuck down in there, but I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah, I don't know if that did much for it at all, but uh, worth a shot. I'll have to come up with some other type of way to service that bearing a little better on the 75 when I get to it, but uh, for now I'm going to just put this back together. Okay, so I've now gotten the transport service completely finished. Had no problems with it whatsoever. In fact, it was extremely anticlimactic compared to uh, what I dealt with in the TZK55 and the 61. And uh, yeah, just no troubles whatsoever. The uh, clutch for the uh, take-up drive has been replaced before on this unit. That's not the original one, and I can tell because there is writing on it. I'd show you, but, uh, well, I figured there was no point really showing you. But it is a replacement. It must have gotten done when the belts were originally changed on this because it didn't have the original belts either. But uh, I'll just show you the uh, Fix Your Audio Belt is working just fine in this unit. It's centered perfectly. I don't know if you can tell very well, but it's riding right in the middle of the pulley, right where it needs to be. And uh, yeah, I've already tested the transport. I had the torque tape in it and everything, and it's got flawless operation here. It's got no issues with it whatsoever. I'm getting about uh, 4.5 for torque on the uh, back tension and uh, something like 33 on the take-up side, which is a little low, but uh, it's within spec. I think the spec is between 28 and 43, so uh, 33 is just fine. I'm happy to leave it the way it is. So, uh, yeah, all I've got to do now is to uh, put this back in the deck, but uh, before I do that, this is the original motor from it. I did rebuild it, but uh, unfortunately this is no longer going to be useful. See, there is just too much play here now. And the reason there's too much play is because the uh, thrust bearing back here is just too worn out. There's nothing left for it to, uh, to thrust against. So as a consequence, this is so far in that way that the rotor is rubbing on the uh, motor coil so this is going to fail if i try to use it again so out it comes instead this is the motor from the tck61 and it is working flawlessly dead quiet so uh, i'm very happy about this and uh, yeah all i gotta do is put this back in the deck now and then we've got more to talk about on the underside Okay, so we are in the bottom of the unit now, and I just wanted to show you exactly what I did under here. You see that relay right there? That is brand new. This is the old one right here. And this is the exact same type of relay we used in the uh, TCFX5C. I used three of them in that machine, and I used one in the Nakamichi BX150. Anytime I find these types of relays, I just automatically replace them. And you might be asking yourself, does the TCK55 have one of these? Yes, it does. The 55, the 61, and the 65 all use these relays to switch between record and play. And uh, I just find over time that they get really dirty and they start causing problems and might as well change them while you're in there. Unfortunately, with, with the 55, I didn't have a, re a relay to go in that one. I only had five for my original order. And uh, used three of them in the TCFX5C, used one of them in the, in the NAC BX150, and I knew I would need one for this. So uh, yeah, that's all five accounted for. So I've got another 10 coming in now, so I will replace the one in the 55. But uh, yeah, that's another reason why I didn't wanna get into recording with that deck. This one will be recording, so, uh, well, it'll be recording as long as that works, but you know what I'm saying there. Now I gotta straighten out this uh, reinforcement bar if I can, because it's not quite lining up the screw hole over there anymore. I don't know if I can do anything for this, but uh, 
I'll see if I can straighten it just a bit. It doesn't need to be too straight. It just has to be straight enough to get the screw in. And it might be okay now. I'll loosen it up from over here just to try and get the screw to engage on this side. If I can get the screw in, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, the problem is you really have to take so many screws out of this in order to get the, uh, the front panel off that it's really hard to uh, deal with something like this when it's been dropped and bent like this one has. But uh, as you can see, I got her to bite now, so it's fine. Now we gotta do our operation, get rid of all the, uh, the nasty brown circuit glue, because that is not going to help us long term. So we'll come over like this, and I will go find a appropriate dental pick. And we'll just start working on this. Because this goes conductive, especially when it's this brown and dried out like this. So it's got to go. And once I'm done this, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to look over this board, especially to see if there are any fractures or whatnot from being dropped. What we've got here is a diode in a uh, insulating sleeve here. I'm not too worried about losing the uh, circuit glue because it's already insulated that diode, so I'm not going to replace this with anything else. Just going to get rid of it. Okay, so the circuit glue's all cleaned up now. Here is the first area, as you saw me do on camera. I don't see any issues with that anymore, so should be fine now. Down here, I got this cleaned up too. This one was a little tricky because I had to get out the acetone to, uh, to get rid of some of that ugly brown crap. But uh, the worst area was actually over here by where this uh, capacitator is. All of this was covered in, in brown crap circuit glue, and, and uh, I don't know if you can see it too well, but this pin on this IC has started corroding away. So uh, very good that we got to this in time. So I'm going to have to reflow that and hope the connection is still good. I might check it with my multimeter before I close this up, but uh, yeah, everything's cleaned up now. I had to uh, pull this off the board to get at the circuit glue underneath, but it's all clean now. That uh, brown crap was just basically covering this whole area, so very good to get it out of the way. Now I just got to do my uh, soldering stuff and uh, we can put this back together. All right, I'm just about to go into the other room and try to do some recording with this, but before I did that I figured you might want to see just how well it cleaned up. I had to go over the uh, faceplate several times with uh, Simple Green. And that took most of it off, but uh, as far as these knobs go, they were so filthy I had to use acetone on those. So uh, I didn't want to use acetone on the faceplate because then it takes all the labels off. And uh, we don't want that. So uh, yeah, the deck seems to be working just fine. I did have an issue after doing the uh, circuit board service underneath that uh, every time I put a tape in it, it started immediately wanting to record right away. And I found the cause of that was a pool of acetone I hadn't soaked up yet on the underside. So I had to clean that up and uh, it seems to be fine now. Like it's not trying to go into record mode now. It's playing just fine. Some of the, of the LED segments in the uh, VU meter are a little bit weak, but... Uh, I'm not particularly concerned with that. It's working well enough. And yeah, I think it's ready to go. Have not tried the RMS stuff yet. Probably won't for quite some time because I don't really have much use for that. 
but uh, yeah, I think it's ready to go. And it looks about 10,000 times better than when we started. So let me see if I can put some recording onto this and uh, we'll see what kind of sound we get out of her. Oh wait, I gotta take the cover off and set the speed. I forgot to do that. All right, let's adjust us some speed here. You'd think I'd learn by now that I need to have things ready to do things, but... Okay, running slow, very slow. We'll fix that right now. I'm using the Denon's speed test tape, so I'm calibrating it to the Denon. These adjustments are so twitchy. And I think we'll stop right there. And look at the wound flutter, 0 0.05. So I guess that's what a fix your audio belt does for these things. I'm seeing it even below 0 0.05 there. I love it. Let's try another one. We're going to get the speed calibration tape I did with the RSB755 now, the quartz lock machine. I'll wind into it a little bit here so you're not waiting too long. Speed looks right on target. I'm happy with that. Bottom flutter is about the same. More than good enough for me. So I'm going to call that a success. And I'm going to go try and record on this.
So, now that we're done listening to it record and play, what are my thoughts about this thing? Well, quite frankly, I think it's the best sounding Sony two-head machine in my collection. It's better than the 45, it's better than the 55. Well, the 55 didn't record, so that's not saying much, I guess, but it's better than the TC FX5C as well, I think. By a little bit, not by much. The 5C can do Dolby C, which this one can't, but that's fine. I don't need it for noise reduction at all. I don't record with noise reduction at all anyway, so why would I need it? But uh, yeah, given the condition this thing showed up in, I'm honestly shocked that it performs quite that well. You heard it. It's got plenty of treble to go around, and yeah, it just records extremely well. It loves this, the Sony Metal SRs. What can I say? In terms of keeping up with the three heads, of course it doesn't do that very well. I can still tell I'm listening to a tape, no matter what, with any of those recordings I did with it. I did three songs on it, and uh, yeah, each time it sounded like a tape, so... It's not able to fool me the way the, the big three headers can, but... It's still pretty dang good for what it is. In terms of keeping up with the two Nakamichi two-headers, I don't think it quite gets to that level. It gets close, though. It gets much closer than I thought it would. But, uh, yeah, very happy with the way this turned out. Now, are there any further issues to deal with on this machine? Yes, a very minor one. I didn't check the azimuth, and as a result, it's off. And I can tell it's off because uh, once I got to the end of my three songs I recorded on this machine and the tape went into uh, a track that was recorded on another machine, all the treble dropped out of it. So, uh, yeah, it's possible that it's out of adjustment for azimuth and I will have to do that in the future. I will do that off camera on this machine because uh, when it comes to the uh, TCK75, I'll have to do it on that machine for sure. So I might as well do it on camera there. But uh, yeah, for this one, I'll just get out the scope when I've got time and just dial it in that way. I've dialed it in by ear right now, so it's pretty close right now. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. I hope I get the idler tires real soon, like in the next week or so, so I can start on the, on the 75. If I can't, I'll find something else to uh, occupy my time with. Maybe we'll get into the Sony Open Reel machine again. But... Uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I really hope the idler tire comes in so I can start on the 75. I will say that after discovering the issues with the capstone motor from this one, I did fire up the 75 briefly just to see if it made any weird noises that would cause me to uh, think I needed a new capstone motor for that machine too, and uh, that one's dead quiet. However, that one also runs the capstan at about half speed, so we're going to have to look into that when we get to that machine, but uh, that's neither here nor there. We're dealing with this one right now, and I'm happy with the way this is, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.